All right, here's my Super Cub. Um, obviously, after Cannonball, but and I just I, I did a video on that already. But this video here is a little bit of a cleanup. I haven't really clean clean it up yet. I actually haven't washed it yet. <clears throat> what I did was uh, I sprayed it down with the pressure washer. Just sprayed all the crud off. Just to get a better look at it. And my initial assessment of it was correct. Uh, everything held up really well. Um, even in the crash. Um, you know, for example, here. Look at this cover here. There's like no scratches at all from the crash. Everything here that's, you see little rubbing marks. That's all for me. You know, that's for my boots. For my boots and my pants. Rubbing against right here. Uh, obviously the, uh, the, the uh, peg bar is bent. So I'm, I'm buying another one. This peg bar is so cheap. I couldn't believe it. The price on this thing is only twenty seven dollars, twenty seven bucks for this this thing. That's like dirt cheap. Uh, the leg shield, you see, it's still a bunch of bug bugs and dirt and stuff. Even though the pressure washer, I wash, I sprayed it, it still didn't get it all off. But then again, my pressure washer is not very strong. Um, but looking at it, I have some little scratches here and there. That's from, I'm not sure what that's from. That's probably from the road, maybe from the crash. I'm not sure. Uh, and up here, this is probably from the crash, I'm guessing. But no, it's very minor. So I'm leaving the the, uh, the lake shield alone. I'm not going to uh, be replacing it. Now, obviously, it has some wear marks along here. Uh, a little bit of wear marks. That's from the, uh, that's just from, you know, all, all my stuff, rubbing and stuff. Um, and the biggest damage that you see is right here again I, I pointed out before so I'm still debating if I should replace this piece or not I might because this, this piece again this everything on this bike is like a uh, really low cost this piece is only uh, $47 47 bucks for this whole brand new piece um, my turn signal here is scraped up banged up this turn signal a new one is $33 uh, and the little clips in here, it's like a couple bucks, probably like another five bucks or so, five, maybe ten dollars for like the two piece, the, the little rubber mount. Actually, I might not need to replace the rubber mount because it's rubber, and rubber, rubber doesn't break, right? But there is another little plastic piece, that one's, I think that one's probably broken or bent. So I'll probably have to replace that, and that one's only a couple bucks, maybe two or three dollars. Um, I'm probably going to replace this piece right here as well. This cover piece here, uh, mainly because of this little scratch here from the from the windshield. When I when I hit like a real big pothole, this this windshield will actually slam down on here, and that's what scratches it. I should have put like a st sticker or, or some tape here that would have prevented that. It would have been okay. Uh, again, you see a little bit of uh, gravel scratches as well along right here, like little specks along right here and along right here, little specks uh, of scratches. Um, yeah, held up really well. So obviously I set the turn signal already in here. And I still have my factory mirror, so I'm gonna take off this aftermarket mirror, put my factory mirrors back on. So those were brand new, pretty much. Uh, my rear rack here, my Kojima rack. This is aftermarket, Kojima panel racks. You see a little bit of scratching from the, from the garage as well. That's no big deal. This actually protected the rest of the bike, right? Or the, uh, protected all oh, this area, so that, that worked out really well. And obviously the reflector, I mean, who cares about reflector, you know? It's like, I'm not gonna replace this, you know? Nobody gives a shit about reflector. Most of the time people take this off anyways, but I'm, I'm leaving it on for safety. And the reflector license plate uh, bracket right here is scratched up. So I'm just gonna bend this back and maybe spray paint it. And it's no big deal, it's steel, so it's no big deal. The rear uh, turn signal, I'm probably gonna probably gonna replace this. Oh, oh I just noticed this. I didn't even see this. The cracker here, but it still works. So I'm probably gonna replace this as, as well as the front side, the front one too. So both the front and rear, I think I'm gonna replace uh, just because. So each one of these are thirty-three dollars. So not too bad for LED. Uh, let's see what other scratches over here. So I just noticed this right here. This is the 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 uh, this wing arm end cap, right? There's just scratches right there, and this is little scratches here, and I guess little scratches here too, from the gravel from the crash. 
that's about it. Um, and I'm not going to replace it. So I'm going to leave that as is. No big deal. So I think the only thing I'm going to replace is the, uh, obviously, the uh, the bar here. This bar, that's, that's uh, $27. 27 plus 47 for the fender. Uh, plus 33 something, 33 some change, 34. Uh, that's, let's call it 40 bucks, including the little plastic piece inside. So 40 bucks for the front and rear, so that's 80. Uh, 80, let's call it 30 bucks. That's 110, 110, plus the fender, it's, uh, let's call it 50 bucks, 110, 160. 160 bucks is gonna cost me for a crash. That is dirt cheap. I can't believe it. 160 bucks for all that. That's really cheap. Uh, yeah. All right, so let's move beyond that. So I I actually uh, checked my valves, and this, this is where I found really impressive. This is the first little bike, small bike, that I had that I rode more than 10,000 miles, and not just 10,000 miles, but 10,000 miles hard. You know, I was like, wide open throttle uh, ten, 10 to 12 hours every day wide open throttle every single day 10 to 12 hours uh, wide open throttle and the valve did not need any adjustment you know, when I left home I checked and they were fine and I can't remember when the last time I actually adjusted them I think I only adjusted them I think once after the initial break in I adjusted it you know around I think probably around a thousand miles and I haven't touched it since. Um, and the bike has what, almost uh, almost 14,000 miles now, right? Like 13.9 or 13.8 or something like that. I think 13.9 something and some change. Um, so it's, anyways, first small bike that I had that I rode that much, that many miles hard that I never had to adjust the valve. All the other bikes I had, even my Elite, you know, 10,000 miles of hard riding, I, I had to adjust the valves. Uh, but this one, nope, it's, it's just as good as it was uh, the last, you know, at, since the last adjustment, uh, quite a few months ago. You know, so I'm in the middle of changing oil, and you can see the oil train. And actually, uh, look at my uh, train plug. So remember, I, I before I left, I put in the magnetic train plug here. So the magnet's actually, it's not outside, it's actually on the inside. So it's inside, you know, you unscrew this and that's where the magnet is, it's inside. So I like that design better. Anyways, you can see all the steel filings right there. All right, all the steel filings. You can see built up. So when I left, uh, or when, when I changed it, the last time I changed it was uh, was in ba Bangor, or Bang Bangor, Bangor, you know, just about 50 miles or so north of Pearl Harbor, or not north, is it north? North, north, uh, west of Bar Harbor, just 50 miles away from Bar Harbor. Uh, I changed it at the Walmart and it had actually had more, I think it had a little bit more uh, iron, more steel uh, filings than this, but uh, but there it is. So I'm glad I, I actually, I'm glad I got this magnetic uh, drain plug because all this stuff will be floating around in the oil and, and you know, this is, this will cause Basically, it's kind of abrasive, right? Because it's just filing, so it wears things out faster. So let's wipe this down. Wipe this out. And now you see that it's, um, you know, it's still oily. That's why it's smeared like that. But anyways, uh, there's still a lot of steel filings um, that's in there. They got caught in there. Uh, let's wipe this down. Now let's look at the oil. Let's look at the oil real quick. I think my oil's finished straining. No, it's actually still dripping a little bit. So the oil I did the last time I changed it was again in in Bangor, Bang Bangor. Uh, so basically, this oil has about uh, has about around 5,000 miles on it so it's very dark let me see how metallic it is it doesn't look actually it doesn't look very metallic I don't I don't notice any metallic so I think most of the 
Also the steel was, was cut by the ma magnet. So it looks, uh, again, it's very dark. So it looks good. This was, uh, this was mainly Amsoil. Amsoil 2050, you know, for meant for uh, V-twin, V-twin air cool engines, you know, Harleys basically. Uh, so I put that in there and I also topped it off. Whenever I needed topping off, I used, uh, uh, I used uh, Walmart uh, Syntec, Walmart Syntec uh, 2050 as well, uh, synthetic uh, oil. And it didn't need topping off much. When I was in New England and around the Great Lakes, it was very cool. So the, the, so the oil level stayed full. It wasn't until uh, like South Dakota, Wyoming, where it started getting hot, where I needed to top off. But actually, I never needed to top off more than... Uh, um, the topping off was less than halfway. You know, basically the 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 between the uh, the top mark and the bottom mark on the oil oil uh, fill, you can see the uh, top the uh, full mark and the the low mark. It never went to halfway. It was it was always above halfway. And actually, I only I think I only topped it off. Well, I think I topped it off twice. The first time it went near halfway. Then the second time it was just slightly uh probably about a quarter down from from the uh from the top uh, so i only needed like a couple ounces in total so that was really good uh on my way there from uh from uh from home to to maine i used uh i used where's my where's this oil i used let's move this back here back underneath the uh I'm, I still had a little bit of oil dripping there move over here and look at the oil that I use when I left home so that's the oil I use I use Moto 1060 1060 you're like what the heck 60 so this is also synthetic this one's an ester base right here ester base synthetic um, this is meant for uh, also air cool V twins in this particular case the reason why I have this is because uh, you know I used to have a Moto Guzzi and Moto Guzzi is also air cool V twin and that's what they call for I think I think they call for a 1060 so uh so that's what i left with and i also had to top this off to um what did i use to top off with i think i used the same uh same uh walmart brand oil that's, that's actually where i bought it when i first uh, changed the oil um no i should i didn't change the oil at i didn't change the oil until i got to maine uh, but when i when i started to need to top it off it was probably about i think in uh I think I got to the low oil mark in um, around Wyoming or South Dakota or somewhere in there. You know, after like four or five days of hot riding, uh, hot weather riding, I went down to the low mark. Um, so I got some of that. Uh, actually, you know what? I got I topped it off with Amsoil. That's where that's where I got the Amsoil from. I topped, I, I went I bought the Amsoil at the Harley De Harley uh, shop. Uh, so anyways, uh, so this is what I'm going to use now to fill up my oil. Uh, once I finish, you know, finish doing my, uh, my oil, my oil change. Um, I don't think I have anything else to say with this bike. I mean, it, <laughs> I'm, I'm really impressed by it. Everything held up really well. It crashed really well. Uh, geez, you know, less than $200 in damage, uh, from the crash. Or I'm gonna be, you know, whatever I'm gonna replace, it's gonna be less than 200 bucks. So, uh, I'm not gonna replace the leg shield. So, so the leg shield itself is actually 200 bucks, but you know, it's so the scratch here is so minor that I don't care. It doesn't really, it doesn't bother me. Uh, this might not bother me either, but I'm gonna change it anyways. I'm gonna change this too. Oh, yeah, so this is also, you know, 30 about 30 bucks or so. Um, so yeah, so. There's the uh, after effect, and obviously my top case is scratched up, and this top case is very solid. You know, this top case is a is a two hundred dollar top case, very solid. Uh, Shad made by Shad, and Shad advertises this. You know, if you are on the website, they advertise this this particular model as their adventure travel uh, top case. So I think it's a little bit sturdier than the, some of the other cases, maybe. Uh, you know, it's very thick plastic. You know, it didn't crack and it didn't cave in or anything.
so it held up really well and it took up most of the blood i think if it didn't have the top case here that would have been more damage on the bike itself so because because this top case and you look here it, it extends past past the side of the bike so so it helped protect the, the bike quite a bit um yeah so i'm just gonna finish change, do, changing the oil i'm gonna clean out the uh chain guard i'm gonna take this two chain guard out and clean out the inside because that is full of oil you know pool of oil is all greasy it's really nasty so i'm gonna take that out i'm gonna spray it with wd-40 to to loosen it up dissolve it a little bit it's, uh you know wd-40 acts, acts like a solvent on grease and oil uh so so i'll use that to then i'm gonna wipe it all out then i'm gonna clean the chain and loop the chain and it's good uh other thing with this chain i got this is a DID chain, D-I-D-E-R chain. So basically it's a motocross, it's a motocross race bike chain. And it held up this pretty much this whole time. Uh, when I put it on back in uh, in uh, Syracuse, New York, from Syracuse, New York to Bar Harbor, it took me about a thousand miles, you know, of zigzagging around to get there. Uh, from that from that distance, I think I adjusted the chain uh, twice. Very small adjustment. Then after that, uh, I rode all the way back here and I only adjusted the chain once. And I actually didn't even need it because my adjustment on the on the uh, on the uh, the uh, adjusting nut was only one one twelfth of a turn. So one twelfth of a turn is like nothing. Um, so I, it didn't really even need it the whole time back. So, anyways, um, yeah. So that's it. That's about it. Uh, I guess after. Well, I guess I'm gonna, probably gonna wash wash this thing, you know, with soap and stuff. But uh, I'm probably not gonna ride this bike again for at least a month because my body is just exhausted. It's aching. Last night was the first night that I I was able to sleep on my left side uh, for my crash because when when I crashed, I landed on my left side and the whole left side was just so sore and in pain that I couldn't I couldn't lay on the left side. So last night was the first time that I was able to lay on the left side. So, so that's what I crashed on Sunday, right? I think I crashed on Sunday. I crashed on Sunday. Last night was, what was it, Friday night? So yeah, last night was Friday night. So basically Monday, Tuesday, I crashed on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So it took over five days for me to be able to lay on my left side. Uh. Yeah, that's it all right thanks for watching and that's the that's basically the update i'm not sure if i'm gonna update anymore um uh, yeah that's about it thanks for watching